Hi friends, so today this is gonna be a little bit more of like a me talking to you guys type of video, but I know that God wanted me to make this video at this exact time and I know it's gonna help people. So I've just personally in this last season, I've been in a season where it's honestly, if I'm being honest, it's been the hardest season that I personally have ever been through. And a lot of times we're gonna go through tough seasons. See, I believe that God doesn't put us through tests for no reason. I believe that every single time we go through a test, there's a testimony and that every time we go through that test, we come out looking more like Jesus. So in this season, I personally was in this season slash last season, I was in a dark place, if I'm being honest with you guys. I was in a place where I felt broken. I felt hopeless. I felt as if God didn't love me. And it was a lot of, most of it really was lies that the enemy was really feeding and feeding me and feeding me. But a lot of it too was that I didn't fully understand what God's love truly was like or what it truly was about. Because before I get saved, right, before we all got saved, we, when you're in the world, you have this counterfeit idea of what love is. You know, the world says that love is status, or the world says that love is followers, or the world says that love is how good you look or how your appearance is. But when I got, came to Christ, Jesus showed me a love that was different than what I was used to. It was a love that was unconditional. And if I'm being honest with you guys, I didn't fully, fully know how to accept this because this was a love that because the love Jesus has for us, it is a love that is unconditional. It is a love that is uncircumstantial. It is a love that does, is not dependent on what we have done, but it is a love solely just because he is love. You know, the Bible says in first John that God is love. So for a lot of my life, especially when I got saved, I couldn't fully comprehend how God could love me so, so much. And I'm sure that you guys have felt that way before. You felt that you've made too many mistakes. You felt that you have just allowed yourself to commit the same sin over and over and over again. And you're like, how could God ever forgive this? How could God love me for doing the same thing over and over again? But I want to tell you watching today that your past does not disqualify you for being loved by God. I remember when I first got saved, I had this encounter with the Lord where I went to sleep and as I was sleeping, I had this dream where I was in my house. And as I was in my house, I was just looking for Jesus in my house. I was looking for Jesus. I was going everywhere like, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? I was just looking for him. And as I was looking for him, I couldn't find him. And I was asking the Lord in the dream, Jesus, where are you? Where are you? And as I said that, it was like within an instant, all these like love shaped objects, kind of like, I guess to describe it, like these heart shaped objects were just like forming in front of me. And I just keep seeing, kept seeing hearts all over the house. And that was basically God showing me that even when we don't see him, he still loves us and he's still there for us. And in this season, like what I went through was just something that I personally had never been through before. It was, it made me question God. You know, a lot of times, how many times do we know the word of God? Do we know the promises of God in our life? But yet we question and we, we doubt like, God, is this going to happen? Or God, are you still with me? And I was in a place where I just did not feel God. I truly did not feel his love. And one thing I want to say to you today is that God's love is not determined upon your feelings. It's not determined upon our emotions. His love is true. And his love is always something that is going to be with us. See, I want to read something in Hebrews chapter four, verse 16. And it says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So the writer of Hebrews is saying that when we when we when we make mistakes, when we sin, we can come boldly before the throne of grace because there's mercy, there's love, there's grace that God has for us. And honestly, last night I went to this service and it was just something that really just changed my life forever because I had just been, like I said, in this season, feeling just so, so not necessarily empty, but more of like, I felt just so far from God, like he wasn't necessarily with me. And last night I fully surrendered myself to God and he met me where I was. This truly is a testimony because all those, it was almost as if yesterday when I just surrendered everything to God, all those lies, all the shame, all the rejection, all the heartbreak, all those things literally just 
broke off of me. It was so supernatural. Like it literally just broke off me. And I just began to just encounter the Lord in a new way that I have never encountered him before. And I just want to say this again, that your past does not disqualify you from being loved by God. See God multiple times throughout the Bible. He used so many different people who had a terrible past. Let's think of Paul or Saul from Tarsus, right? This was someone who was persecuting Christians. He was literally a Christian persecutor. Yet God still saw something in him that Paul didn't see in himself. And because of that, God saved Paul and used him to write what is it, two thirds of the New Testament. And that just shows that our past, the things that we have done, does not disqualify us from being loved by God. See, a lot of times the devil, he tries to lie to us and make us think that, oh, you've done this thing too many times for God to forgive you or, or you don't, you're not loved. But as human beings, we all want to feel love. We all want love. And a lot of times we try to find love in either relationships or we try to find love in all the other places rather than the source. And every time we try to find love that I've noticed, every time we try to find love in a place that is not the source, which is God, we're never going to feel that full, full love. So let's take David, for example, this was someone who he was after God's heart. He was a man that truly loved God. And even yet he had shortcomings. For example, the story of when David and Bathsheba, he, David, right, he sees someone else's wife, sleeps with her, gets her pregnant, kills that man, and then hides from God. And then after all of that, after him hiding from God, God sends Nathan the prophet to go to David to talk to him about the sins that he has committed. But even through that, we still see how the love of God is poured out even in moments where we feel that we have disobeyed that we feel that we have just messed up and I just want to tell you today that God loves you I feel like you really need to hear this that God genuinely loves you and I just feel like you really really need to hear that maybe you're in a place right now where you don't feel loved or you feel that you're going through a dark season and like I said when we go through dark season it doesn't mean that God doesn't love us that's not what it means but God allows that to happen so that we can be more like him. Psalm 63 verse three says, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. So the psalmist is saying in this, because your love is greater than life, the love of God is greater than anything we can have in this life. And for so long in my life, I didn't fully know that until I came to Jesus and the love that he showed me, the grace that he showed me, guys, I fall short every day. Before I came to Christ, my past, whew, yet God still loves me. And not only does he love me, he loves you. And the love that he has for you is special, especially made for you. And his, you know, he said something to me earlier when I was praying about this video. And he said, Andrew, my love for you is more numerous than the sand on the seashore. And I want to tell you today that God's love for you is more numerous than the sand on the seashore. So I just want to pray right now because I just feel that God wants to fill you again with his love. He wants you to encounter his love. So just close your eyes wherever you are. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that Lord, you would fill whoever is watching this, God, behind this their screen they're watching it from. God, that you would fill them with an unconditional, overwhelming love. God, I thank you, Lord, that even while we were sinners, Jesus, you died for us, oh God. You demonstrated your love on the cross. So, Father, I thank you. Father, I glorify you. And, Father, I pray that this person would never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen.